Okay. Hi all, it's me Ryan here, and today we'll be taking a look at this. Right here is Super Solid's XG 340R Gaming Monitor. So its name itself really tells you quite a fair bit about the monitor. 34 in the name is basically the size of this monitor, so it's 34 inches which is quite huge. And then R stands for the curvature. So to be precise, the curvature on this monitor is 1500R which is a lot better than 1800R. That means you'll notice the curvature more compared to the 1800R which is a lower amount of curvature. So with that, let's jump right into the specifications of this monitor. Let's go! Four specifications of this monitor. It has a curvature of 1500R as mentioned, resolution of 3440 by 1440 at 100Hz. Its aspect ratio is 21 by 9, 300 nits peak brightness, a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, with AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility. It has a color gamut of 120% sRGB and 16.7 million colors, along with a response time of 6 milliseconds GTG. It's also visa mountable, with a 75 by 75 mm visa mount. It also uses great A plus panels from Samsung. For its I.O., it has one audio pass-through jack, DP for DisplayPort, HDMI 2.0 and 2 HDMI 1.4. This could be used for PIP mode. On the topic of PIP, which is called picture in picture, it's quite simple to actually activate it on this monitor. Just reach down to the navigation buttons and press the extreme left button two times. The left will be determined when the monitor is facing you and it's the extreme left button on the right hand side. Then press the right button to the extreme left button 6 times, then press the extreme left button 1 time. Select PIP mode for the best results, not the windowed mode, as that sort of um, really messes with the resolution of the display that's outputting and doesn't really work that well. And then select the, the second input source, so let's say you're doing DP, then you have to select either you're doing the first HDMI slot or the last HDMI slot out of the three. I personally recommend adjusting the skill of the second input to the max so that you can see the icons as the window is a lot smaller compared to your main. It also has its own internal power supply which means that all you need to do is just plug in the power cable and you're done. You don't have to deal with a power break unlike the R270i and R270. So how does this monitor fare with its competitors? So I'm going to compare this towards the Aftershocks Prism Plus X340 Pro gaming monitor. Yes, the price on that monitor is a bit more expensive, but as you see when I dive right in, um, there's going to be some parts where it trades blows with the Dreamcore monitor, where some parts the Dreamcore monitor underperforms in it, and other parts the Aftershock monitor actually does better. So let's take a look. Well, I'll be comparing it to the Prism Plus X340 Pro. They're both similar in the sense that both monitors have a 100Hz refresh rate. 300 nits peak brightness and a curvature of 1500R, AMD FreeSync and G-Sync compatibility, QHD resolution and the same size of 34 inches. The list goes on and on. However, the main differences are in response time, color depth and stand. The Prism monitor has 6 milliseconds response time, with an overdrive mode to 4 milliseconds compared to super solid 6 milliseconds. The Prism Plus monitor achieves a 10-bit color, however the Super Solid monitor has 8-bit color. This is where the Prism monitor gets its HDR10 certification. Okay, Super Solid does however have a feature that Prism doesn't have, which is a built-in headphone stand at the back of the monitor. This will not only free up more space on your desk as you don't have to put your headset on the desk and also makes the setup look cleaner. However, this all becomes clear why there's a difference between the Super Solid monitor and the Prism Plus monitor in terms of specifications when you look at the price points of the two monitors. The Super Solid monitor comes in at $589 at the time of filming this video and the Prism monitor comes in at $639. This is a $50 price difference between the two. For me, I find that there's two users that will use a 21 by 9 aspect ratio display that I'll cover in today's review. The first type of user will be those with a laptop, and another type of user will be those with desktops. So for those that have a desktop, this monitor will be quite good in terms of productivity, 
as they will be able to view four simultaneous windows if you say they are using a Windows desktop all at the same time which would make use of the big aspect ratio and the amount of screen real estate that this 34 inch monitor provides. It's also really good to play games such as CSGO and BMNG Drive and allows the user to feel more into the game as the game fills up more of their peripheral vision. It also gives you a competitive advantage in first person shooter games such as CSGO with 100Hz refresh rate which will be faster than a normal 60Hz display. How about a user that is using this display with their MacBook or laptop? It's quite a substantial screen improvement as well, most laptops are either 15 inch or 13 inch. So having a 34 inch monitor is really a world of a difference. For MacBook users, you can connect it via Type-C dock and then connect the dock to the monitor via HDMI or DP. Or if those with Windows laptops that have discrete graphics cards such as the MX150 or 250, you can connect it via HDMI to your laptop. Those with integrated graphics on Windows laptops though, you might have an issue where you can't run the monitor at 60 hz For issues with this monitor, well, the issues mostly lie in the unboxing and setup of the monitor. For the setup of the monitor, the screws to use to assemble the stand and connect the stand to the mounting bracket of the monitor isn't really clear. The only step that is clear in this is the screws needed to assemble the two halves of the stand together as there's only three screws provided to do that job. For the unboxing issue, the box that the monitor comes in doesn't really permit you taking out the monitor safely unless you use the method shown which I will show you now. I figured out that the best way to unbox this monitor is like this. So when you get the monitor, this is the front right here. So the best way to do it is you open, okay you don't need to really open the top but then just go down to the bottom from the front you unbox this entire bottom row, then you put it flat on the ground without letting the monitor slide out first. You take out like this, yeah, like do this to the bottom layer so the monitor is on the, on the floor. Then you open up the top and push the monitor through with the box like that. That's the safest way so that the monitor doesn't come out one sided like that. Like that. Over there. The plus point of this monitor is the display. The viewing angles on it is quite good, with minimal color loss viewing at extreme angles. The response time however is a bit controversial as 6 milliseconds is a bit slower than what you normally see for a flat screen monitor. However yes this is curved but it would be nice to see it at around 4 milliseconds. The inbuilt headphone stand is really nice, more features is always better than less. Ambient lighting at the back of the monitor which are red LEDs, accurate colors and build quality is quite good with no part really feeling cheap of this monitor. Hi, I'm here just to interrupt the video just a quick one because I got some um, news that if you wait there's a few more days which is next next Monday uh, which is the 11th of November you're gonna get better pricing on Lazada for this monitor it comes with free delivery or so so it's gonna be a short wait but it's gonna be quite worth it as the, you're gonna get a lot better prices if you just wait till then so mark it down the 11th of November on Lazada the 11 11 sale so with that let's get back to the video okay overall this is quite a decent monitor for the amount of features you get at this price range and just the amount of overall build quality. Okay, so if you're saying you're in the market for a monitor which is good for productivity use and maybe gaming or so when you do intend to dive into the gaming community every now and then, then I would say this is quite a worthwhile investment because for the price point you're getting, it's quite decent for the amount of specification. So with that, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys have liked it, leave a like and subscribe. If you don't like it, feel free to hit the dislike button too. And with that, I'll say. Peace out.